guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today I'm going to give you guys a little soldering lesson on soldering uh, wires for tinning them uh, to prepare them for being attached to wherever you may want them to go, uh, including these uh, Dean's T plug connectors. But this you can use this information for uh, pretty much any battery connector style. Um, I'm going to show you how to prep a brand new connector properly. Um, now. A couple of things, of course, you're going to need is a soldering iron. Um, usually about a 15 to 30 watt iron is more than uh, effective for uh, pretty much about 80%, 90% of the stuff you're going to do uh, on RC stuff. Um, but other electronic stuff, of course, you're going to need lower wattage irons, finer tips uh, for fine circuit soldering, which we can go through in another video on how to re-solder connections on, on circuit boards. But today, I want to show you about how to prep uh, battery connectors for those of you guys who are into the RC hobby um, and you are uh, having difficulties maybe getting a good solid or proper connection. There's different types of solder out there, um, but what I like to use is this uh, 0 0.8 millimeter 6040 uh, light duty Rosencore solder. It's actually the best stuff out there for working with radio and TV electronics, including your RC uh, circuit boards, doing wires no matter how thin or how thick they may be for your power leads. Uh, etc. Now there is this thicker, uh, higher tin rate solder, um, but this stuff is absolute garbage. Um, it has more tin in it than anything else, uh, although it does uh, seem to melt okay initially. Um, that's the first time. The second time you want to try and fix that connection because you have screwed it up. It's not going to melt so easy and it doesn't tend to stick that well either. Uh, in my experience, and it really doesn't like working with flex paste too well. So, you know, this is the stuff I use that works right. I've been using this stuff for close to 40 years now, and it's the best, you know. And uh, don't worry about the lead. It's not going to hurt you, okay? Anyhow, so in preparing your connector, what you need is a little bit of flux, or soldering paste. Now what I use is this stuff called Masters uh, Soldering Paste. Okay, this is not plumber's paste. This is for working with electronics. Okay, so make sure you get the right stuff. Now there's other brand names out there, but it must say soldering paste and preferably say also for electronics on the can somewhere. Anyhow, so we put a little bit of it on the connector initially. You're going to take your soldering iron, whether it's a pen tip or this is like a blade tip one. Now this one, uh, the, the, the blade tips are really nice when you're going to be working with thick uh, wire uh, on battery connectors and thick wire period. Um, this is also, uh, what is the wattage on this one? I believe it's, uh, yes, this is a 30 watt iron. So really good for doing this stuff with. So just get that to liquefy a little bit and then just start pushing your solder into the connection. Just like that, and you create a little bit of solder on there. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the other connector. And these helping hands are, are great uh, for being able to hold stuff in place, so it gives you the freedom to be able to solder accurately. And that's it, boom, done. Okay, so now with the wire thing, I do not like wire strippers. Now on thick silicone wires, uh, you're going to need a knife, okay? Um, where there's silicone coated wires. Uh, one of the prime examples here would be something like this. Now for, for making your wire connection, um, you want to go to at least the depth of your connector, all right? So we're going to eyeball it as best we can there. Just put a little cut mark in, don't dig deep, and it will pull off, no problems. And that's a good depth right there. Now, using heat shrink tubing is another thing. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the heat shrink tubing. I do believe I have a piece in here that will work for this. Now, because this is also a thicker wire, we need a thicker piece. Now, this is quarter inch heat shrink tubing. So we're going to slide it over the top, okay? Now what you want basically is about twice the length uh, for the most part of what your actual connection is. So 
So about that much roughly. Now when preparing your wires too, um, you want to turn the wire always clockwise. Always twist your wire clockwise. It seems to be the natural way that wires like to twist. Then we're going to take some soldering paste on it. And we're going to just go around it, surround the area of the wire. And we'll move this out of the way for a minute. And again, you want good coverage on your wire. You want that soldering paste to go in there. What the paste does is it actually cleans the wire um, and allows the solder to stick into the wire. Now this you can hold on for a little bit longer of a time. And then you're going to want to check it. So rotate the wire. And we've got to put some more along this side here. So I just put a little bit more paste on there. Now if you see that you got a bit of a blob there, you can just clean it up by just doing this. And knock the excess off into the tin or if you have one of those little um, spongy metal things. Okay, so now the wire is prepped, our connector is prepped. for you. Now you're going to want to also heat this up again too and get some extra solder on there in place. Heat it up. Stick your wire on the connector. Hold it for a few seconds. Now this side got connected really, really well. This side pretty decently. We could actually put a little bit of filler in there just on the side just to give it a little bit extra better bond. So to do that you got to be very quick when you do this part. And there we go. Good solid bond ready to go. Okay, now we take our heat shrink tubing and bring it up the line. And you want to hold it firmly in place so that the tubing comes close to the edge. Okay, and keep your fingers in the back side. And then take a lighter or a torch. Just go across back and forth just like this. Continue to rotate. Okay. Now we have another connector that we want to do. Same thing. We'll just use a slightly little bit longer piece of tubing. So let's repeat the process. said to turn clockwise with the wire. Get your soldering paste.
vector up. A little bit of extra solder on the tip. Sometimes the wire is going to get a little hot on you, so you might want to move your fingers back. And you want to hold that for a few seconds. And that one didn't go solid, let go too soon. So if you get the wire too hot, it's going to take longer to cool before you can move it away. Okay. Now, when you're doing um, wires from a battery, this gets really... Uh, Delicate, especially with lipo batteries. If you're heating the wire up to the point where it really is super hot, that's not a good thing because that heat can travel through the wire and disconnect your um, wire from the inside of the battery. So you don't want to get it too hot. So make sure that if it starts to feel a little bit hot, stop and let it go cold before you reattempt to solder again because getting that too much heat is not going to be a good thing there. So let's check our connection. Looks like we're good and solid on that side. And we're definitely solid there. That is one connection that is not going to come undone. Okay, so once again, we'll grab our whoop, a piece of heat shrink tubing. That one fell. Okay, let's get a piece that is red anyways. I'll pick up that other one later. Again, like before, we want to hold that up front as close as we can. And then that's it. Now we've got a uh, connector completely done and ready to go. Now, some people Although they know there's a process in putting stuff together, they don't quite understand, well, how do I get it apart again after I got heat shrink tubing on there? It's kind of on there, isn't it? Because of the way it forms, right? Too simple. Take your hobby knife or razor knife. Go right up to the connection area here. And just give it a slice. And then very carefully slice near the back here. You don't want to get into the casing of the actual wire. This is one method of doing it. That will free that up. Reheat. See, this solder lets go quick. That tin solder ain't going to let go that quick and easy. method of getting this stuff off is so you can heat it up because you're not going to burn the silicone and then you can peel it off just like so. It's another way to get it off of there especially if you don't have a knife nearby. So, that concludes this video on how to do this sort of thing. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.